What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. On today's vlog, I am taking you to explore a lesser known province but one that is still very interesting, Patikaloa. So for our Batikaloa explorations, we've based ourselves here in Thasikuda with the lovely Uga Bay. This is a property that we've been wanting to visit for a very long time and it has not disappointed us. So let me show you guys around. guys the room and oh my god this is so beautiful this is their villa and it's perfect for a family because it has two rooms and it can house four people very comfortably check this out you have your own private pool your private bar area The Batikalawa town is a 20 minute drive from Pasikuda and we decided to head in and share a very unique experience with you. So we've stepped out in the Bati town for a quick excursion. We are here to learn a little bit about the handloom industry in Batikalawa. Handloom has a very long history with Sri Lanka, dating back to the time when Prince Vidya first came here. It was said in the historic documents that Kuwaini was on the shore spinning cotton at that time. So Batikalo is one of the places that has maintained its link, its strong history to Handloom. And in this operation, we have a female-led operation that hires 25 women who are also the heads of their households. The sad thing is that unfortunately what used to be something that was passed down to the generation by the women in the families, we, we are noticing that the younger generation is not so keen on picking up this skill and it's actually leading to a constriction of the growth of this industry. In fact, making sure that it survives is also um, a huge problem at this moment. And although the government does have programs to teach these skills, the problem really lies in the fact that the youth is not keen on picking these skills up, perhaps due to stagnation, perhaps due to the fact that it doesn't pay enough and you know, they need a very substantial income to survive in these climates. So the question arises, what can we do to ensure these industries continue as these are marvellous and wonderful things that make our culture and our history so rich. To me, the solution feels like one thing that we can do to help this industry is perhaps to reimagine and re-market what handloom means. The product that is yielded by this technique is phenomenal. It's beautiful, it's perfect for our climate, it's rich in colour. So what can we do? Perhaps we can remarket it, apply this technique to trendier, more fashionable items and give it a new lease on life. And to be honest, seeing how it's actually woven from just mere thread into these beautiful, elaborate, coloured 
material is just really a magical process to be honest and it really like hurts my feelings to know and learn that this industry that creates such beautiful creations needs help it needs our help to continue surviving i just feel like there's something that we can do as a community of people to make sure that happens one thing that we can definitely do is you guys should definitely check out Aditi's uh, Facebook page for their creations. See if there's anything that you guys like and maybe purchase to support them. And on top of that, I was just wondering for ourselves, Handloom just needs um, a little bit of a reinvention in my eyes. And I'm just thinking, is there anything that we can perhaps make? Maybe a line of Handloom items that might interest you guys to you know purchase or support these communities where the um, profits etc would make sure that these communities continue to exist that their craft goes on i'm just thinking out loud here let me know in the comments below if that's something you guys would be interested in and while we're on that make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this content you guys other than travel we also really want to bring you more of this kind of content the kind of stuff you don't see or hear about sri lanka the stuff that goes under the radar but really truly adds to the culture and richness of this country and it's also something that i really love sharing with you other than travel other stories of just people and this is just one of those stories so if you're enjoying them give us a like subscribe yeah hopefully we can bring you more of this stuff So we are three two guys, a restaurant that was recommended to us um, by a few people here in Batty. We came here actually to try that crab curry is not there. But crab and seafood like corn is something you should try with in here because this is the industry that is thriving in this area. So Shahan had the prawn curry, he said it was amazing. I'm having a paneer curry. This restaurant is like a very common Indian Chinese-ish kind of restaurant that you find in Sri Lanka really yummy biryani nice tasting ghee a big plate of rice awesome paneer it's good whatever they have whatever we had here was pretty good and satisfying <laughs> So we've freshened up in our rooms and I'm heading out to the lovely beach bar here at Uga Bay. They've got a fabulous beach here and they're organizing it. They are special beach dinner for us. So before that, I'm going to grab a few cocktails and enjoy the sunset. Now the East Coast is renowned for its beautiful beaches and everybody knows that but among them Pasikuda is actually very underrated. It's one of my favorite places because you have this entire bay almost to yourself because of the fact that it's dotted by these resorts. But that also means the beach is very clean and you have the calm blue waters and it's also very serene and peaceful so like I said that's why it's one of my favorites. Remember how I said that this was a very special experience? Well, this is what I meant. I mean the amount of attention to detail, the craftsmanship that has gone into creating this. They've been making this since today in the evening. And I've never actually experienced sitting in a sandbox and having a very fancy meal and a glass of wine. So cheers to Ugabe for making that happen. Definitely a special experience that you can enjoy with your loved one. Um, for a honeymoon or even a proposal, it's up there with a lot of cool things I've done for sure.
So there's one thing that you have to do when you come to Sri Lanka and you're on the east coast, which is to watch sunrise because it's absolutely spectacular here and it's just something that you have to do. But we've gone a step further and asked Ugabe to organize a breakfast sunrise so we can enjoy our sunrise here. And as you can see, it does not disappoint. So this is so stunning. I just can't take my eyes off it for too long. So we are in Betty and our first stop is to explore the famous Patikaloa Lagoon. Lots to share with you on this. Let's get started. So Batikalo is one of the major eastern cities in Sri Lanka. It has a very interesting history. Batikalo is the Portuguese derivative of its name. Originally it was called Matakkalapu which means muddy swamp. Interesting part of the history of this area is the original people. They are known as the Mukuvas and they migrated to this area from India and established seven villages. And the names of these villages still act as historical evidence to these ancient Batikaloan people. Also a very interesting fact is that these people acted as the mercenaries for the ancient Sinhalese kings of the Surya Vamsa. This is where the lagoon meets the ocean and this is probably where the first inhabitants of the place came through from. These huts that you see behind me, they've been made by the community to give a safe haven, temporary shelter for all the fishermen who fish along this coastline in case there's bad weather. So behind me you can see two bridges, the newer one and the older one which is a steel bridge built by the British and is over a hundred years old. Some people actually say this is the longest steel uh, bridge that was built by the British and it's also the place where you can hear the singing fish in this area the most. So this is where people recommend that you come at night time when the traffic is low and you can press your ear against the steel bar and you might if you're lucky be able to hear the musical note that is very mysterious and people still don't know where it's coming from whether it's a fish whether it's something else but there is some noise that you can hear that has baffled people and intrigued them for many many years in Batikaloa. So this is the Batikaloa lighthouse and it was built in 1913 by the British a little nod towards Batikaloa's colonial history. It's adjoining the eco park which is very popular amongst the families in this area to so come and relax in. I would definitely like to check that out as well. So this is Batikaloa's Portuguese fort guys and it was built in the 1600s. It shares the same fate as other forts in Sri Lanka where it was passed on to the Dutch and the British. Today it stands as just a regular administrative office it is not as formidable as it used to be but it is also very unique because it's one of the only forts in Sri Lanka that is surrounded by lagoon. But it's nice that on this boat ride you can see a little bit of everything that Betty has to offer. Okay guys, so we have some Betty locals here. Rigan and Nishoka, they are the ones who helped us actually um, organize this boat ride and gave us a lot of information on planning or how to explore Betty. Thank you to all our subscribers for the continued support. It's so awesome that you know we can drop a message yeah, and I meet know. so many people around <laughs> the country so now. Sometimes uh, when you have locals telling you where to go, it's so much better because you know, we do our own research. But as a local, you can find the hidden spots. Yeah, the hidden <laughs> spots. So that's that's really awesome. Hopefully, we can do more things like this. Too. So guys, we are ending our batty trip with a meal at Gandhi Park. Gandhi Park is a little strip of pavement and some uh, manicured trees and etc. <laughs> some manicured trees etc. by the Batty de Lagoon. It's a very nice view. It's very peaceful here even though the road is just around the corner. They have some nice uh, benches like this to sit and enjoy a meal in. It's very clean here. There's lots of garbage area, like assorted garbage areas here. So that's very nice to see. I'm very happy to see that. But yeah, I definitely wish we had more time here in Betty. What do you say, Shan? Uh, 
I also think um, the bed is huge and lovely and that uh, it has a lot of unexpected things but also a lot of potential to be developed into more of a tourist uh, hotspot because like Pasakuda and Kalkuda are on the fringes and this entire lagoon could be used for so much in terms of doing activities for tourism and yeah hopefully um, the next time we come they'll have more things to kind of do and hopefully we'll have more time in Betty also. I guess that's it, no, for this one? And that is it for this one. With that, I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure you subscribe. No, 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 that's not how it goes. Okay. Um, it's been a while, guys, hold on. Uh, so that's it for this one, you guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video, and leave a comment and let us know what you think. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Also, for those of you who'd like to support us film more of these sort of vlogs where it's independent of hotels and more focused on experiences, do check out our Patreon account and help us build uh, a, a community that will help us kind of do this sort of stuff more. Link in the description.